It's the Weather Blender blog for the 25th of January. Hi everybody, Spencer Atkins here bringing you a quick update. And uh, basically we're just sitting here waiting on the storm. We're going to show you all the different weather models, what they think in terms of totals. And there are a lot of different what we call solutions out there. First of all, showing you the advisories. Uh, basically everybody in the high terrain uh, from Beckley through Bluefield on over to Snowshoe and Elkins are included in the uh, winter storm watch on up to the eastern panhandle and southeast Kentucky as well. Storm system, uh, basically sitting here, the low pressure around Louisiana, right around New Orleans. A kind of complicated deal there. It's spinning counterclockwise, and it's a little high pressure to keep things slightly drier on the eastern sections of North Carolina. Still some dry air around West Virginia. Uh, starting to see some echoes show up, though, in southeast Kentucky. Now, we're going to continue on uh, using these maps here so that it looks a little bit more like uh, what you might see on television. Again, we have uh, kind of a stationary front, and the low is beginning to split into two pieces. This is at uh, 1 a.m., and we have the rain and some rain-snow mix starting to show up, but actually temperatures will be warm enough mainly for rain at the beginning of this during the nighttime hours. And then we'll shift ahead to 7 a.m. Now you see the snow in the blue. That's right up and down I-75 uh, from Kentucky, shifting down into central portions. I guess it's actually 65, uh, shifting down into central portions of Tennessee. And we're starting to see the pink mix in along the Ohio River Valley, which means it's a rain-snow mix and still just some rain around Beckley Bluefield, but seeing some snow up around Elkins. And then we shift out. Now this is 7 p.m. and the system is kind of uh, conglomerated into one big area of low pressure off the Delmarva and you can see that the snow has picked up and moved through pretty quickly and so uh, in between that we are expecting in between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. a good shift over from rain snow mix to snow but the system is going to continue to roll to the east and there's a lot of moisture with this one and the weather models uh, have some differing ideas I think the NAM and the GFS are kind of close this is the NAM model looking at the snow on the ground by 7 a.m. Thursday now remember, there's going to be a lot of melting going on, so I think this is what the models are saying will come down and hit the ground, not necessarily what all remains. One to two inches, again, maybe at best, around the Huntington area. It's a stripe from uh, the yellow is about three inches right around Charleston. Four inches is the next step of green. Five inches to six inches is the white. That would be around uh, Summersville, through Beckley, through Flattop, down through, uh, let's say, McDowell County. And then you notice another big bullseye in the eastern panhandle, the southern base of the eastern panhandle, and it really takes off along the eastern seaboard with 10, 12 inches of snow on up through, uh, well, the major metropolitan areas. Here's a little different look. Actually, this should be by, uh, I know it says uh, 7 a.m. Thursday. I'm sorry. This is actually 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And this is what we call the western shift scenario. One of the models called the WERF thinks that the uh, snow may actually press back a little bit farther to the west. It's kind of the odd man out. I mean, look, you'd have barely anything at all around Charleston. You'd have barely anything at all around Beckley. Uh, one to two, maybe two to three around Beckley. And then it picks up this big, huge six to ten inch stripe along the Ohio River Valley around Parkersburg, a little six inch stripe south of Huntington, and then a, a little blue bomb right over uh, Lawrence County in Ohio with uh, eight to ten inches. I find that hard to believe. Uh, that's a warm punch type of a situation in southern West Virginia, and that's displacing the snow to the west, and then you can see that would bring it 12 to 16 in the eastern panhandle. Uh, the GFS, again, a little closer to the NAM. It does have a 6-inch stripe south of Charleston that runs into southeast Kentucky, and that's been there all along. But then you can see it's a knife's edge drop to just about nothing, the 1 to 2 sitting right in the Ohio River. So, again, I think that it could easily snow that hard, but melt some of that away during the day. This is by 7 a.m. Thursday. And then there's your bullseye, 8 to 10 inches in the eastern panhandle. That seems to be pretty reasonable. Uh, good placement with the, um, the NAM model. And then this is our model we call RPM. It has a lot of 2 to 4 across West Virginia. And a couple of those, uh, I guess, purplish, pinkish blobs would be 4 to 6. The only thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't pick up on elevation very much. I would say the 2 to 4, maybe little elements of 4 to 6 might be okay. And you can see how it drops off again so sharply at the Ohio River where there would be some drier air. Uh, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't show much over the areas around Beckley and Summersville where we know it's going to be a little bit colder uh, upstairs and we're living a little bit higher. Now the weather service, so just show you a couple of these. Here's 12-hour uh, forecast. I believe this was the uh, the first period for Wednesday. And it's showing Charleston with barely anything at all, 1.6 over Huntington and about 1.7 over Beckley and 4.7 over Elkins. Here's uh, Wednesday night inch and a half on top of everything else in Charleston. So they're going on the low side around the metro areas. 
Uh, 5.8 around Elkins, another 4 inches Beckley, 2.5. Uh, that would be in southern West Virginia. And this is the other office that covers southern West Virginia, Blacksburg. And they're going something like 6 to 8 in Greenbrier. And it uh, looks like, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's closer to about 6. It shows just around Union, and then it steps down into the uh, Piedmont, where you still have 1 to 2 there. So there's all these differing ideas. And here's basically how we kind of average this out. One to two inches along the Ohio River. Two to four inches, that runs right up to about Charleston. And then from Charleston to the east, four to six. We may have to nudge that up or down. A six to ten inch stripe, again, in the deep red. And that stretches from, again, maybe the southern tip of Logan County, Boone County, on across Fayette County, northern half of Raleigh, in through Nicholas, Webster, and on up through uh, the Elkins area, through Randolph County. That seems to be pretty reasonable. With less south of Bluefield, uh, for our viewers who watch on uh, CBS 59, Again, because we think the warm punch will be there and probably going to end up scraping out that two to four inches south of Bluefield on the back side of that storm system. But that four to six contour, again, would be pretty solid. And that six to ten, I think, looks pretty good, too. So that's that's kind of a look at what's going on. Again, I think, boy, that's a sign of age, having to put the glasses back on. I think you're going to expect a lot of melting during the day. So whether we end up with one to three, two to four, I think it's going to snow hard at times Wednesday, melt a lot because it'll be in the 30s. And then refreeze. So you're looking at slush and uh, refreeze. So ice, anything that falls that's wet will refreeze. Luckily, it's not Arctic air, so it won't flash freeze. But uh, I think there will be ice out there along with the snow on Thursday morning's commute, the refrozen slush. And then on Thursday, that snow will pull away and uh, we'll try to get back to normal with temperatures back in the low 30s. So that's it for now. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the tour of the weather model. See you later on the Weather Blender blog.